Hi reader girlies, welcome back to the vlog channel and welcome to another fall reading diaries video. You can tell that it's actually a little bit fall weather here because my allergies are kicking and my nose is all red and it just went from a hot week to fully 50 degrees, 45 degrees. So my nose has been a faucet. <laughs> but that means I get to wear my sweater and we can have some cozy fall reading time. So here are some books that, let me just show you. This one is Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. And this is like a special edition. The spine is so pretty. And this is like a literary fiction, which I don't really read much literary fiction, but I was kind of feeling like all the books that I've enjoyed lately have been more towards that genre. And then I was reading reviews of this on Goodreads and someone said that this is a book you need to listen to on audio because Meryl Streep, famous actress, narrates it. And I've been taking him on some more W-A-L-Ks, have to spell it out so that he doesn't freak out. <laughs> and I've been wanting something to listen to. I've been listening to this and I've been obsessed with it. Usually I don't, like I enjoy audiobooks, but I don't listen to them like one after the other. But this one, I would rather be listening to it than anything else. And the narration by Meryl Streep is so good. And it's about this woman who has her three daughters come back to the farm because of the pandemic. But don't worry, it's not really about that. And she is telling them the story from her life when she was in her 20s, when she kind of like got into acting on accident and how she started dating people who were at the time not famous actors, but later became them. It's just like a literary fiction story about that and it's just really, I don't know, it's not something that I would think that I would like, but I've been really, really, really loving it. And then I've been doing my reread of the Throne of Glass series, but I've only ever read the first three books in that series. So I'm now on, I broke my bookmark and now the tassel's all weird. I'm on Crown of Midnight. I listened to Throne of Glass and I've been physically reading this one and I'm like 277 pages into this book. So I should be done with this pretty soon. Now I can't move my arm. It's so cute. And then I bought these two books, which are also literary fiction. I feel like I would really like it right now for some reason. So I got Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson, which I think is like a sort of rich family drama set in New York City. And then Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano, a story of family and friendship. The thing about literary fiction is they're so hard to describe. Like I will read the descriptions for so many books and then have no idea how to explain them because since they're not themed as like fantasy or romance or thriller, it's just a story about anything. It's usually more about human beings, <laughs> which I think is interesting to me right now. We'll see if I like them, but yeah, that's the little stack of books we have going for this week. And I'm really excited to finish these two and then dive into probably Pineapple Street. Good morning guys, I have updates for you and I have a book haul actually, which is shocking because I <laughs> did one recently, but it was for a short slash TikTok slash reel. Which ones do you guys watch? Because I post them on all platforms, but are you a short TikTok or reel person? For Crown of Midnight, I got to page 350. I'm honestly reading this so slow and I don't know if it's because it is a reread, so I don't have the anticipation of what's gonna happen, even though I don't remember what's gonna happen, but I do remember like key things. So it's not that exciting to me, but it has been really cool to reread this book already having read the next one and all the foreshadowing that goes on in this and even how like all of her different book series are connected and I'm kind of seeing ways that they could be, which is really interesting because as of now, I have no interest in reading her um, House of blah, blah, blah series. I've watched explanation videos of one of those books already. And I don't know, I feel like at some point I will get curious and end up wanting to read it. But for now, it would just be a huge accomplishment if I could finish this series. So gonna finish this one today. Hopefully it's only like 60 more pages. It's a different day. Wearing the same outfit. Because this video is sponsored by ThreadUp and Afterpay. Which is gonna be insane for the holiday season and being able to pay in four installments. So let me try on some stuff for you guys. Here's my box. I got some things. ThreadUp is gonna be actually elite for the holiday season because you're gonna have to buy people presents. And you can use Afterpay to pay for your purchase over time, which is gonna be really helpful for budgeting during the holiday season. I feel like this is a fun holiday present idea because I buy these for myself. This is like my second vintage 
vintage coach from ThreadUp because they have such amazing ones on there. And this one was originally $295 and I got it for $140. And then this outfit that I've been wearing like multiple days in a row. This is a free people sweater. I like to look up specific things on the website because it makes it easier to find something good. This is a free people pullover and I am kind of addicted to it and I wanted to wear it with every single outfit. If anything, I am consistent because I also always look up free people movement and I got this skirt which was originally $78 and I got for $26.99 and this out from under tank top. And I also got this free people sweater which was estimated to be $98 and I got it for $48.99. This is my other coach bag that I got from ThreadUp that I'm so obsessed with. Their vintage coach is so cute and right now they're doing the most insane deal I've ever seen them do. If you use code SHEER, you can get an extra 40% off your first purchase with them and then even $15 off more of that if you check out for the first time with Afterpay. Also, if you click the link in the description, you can look at all of these items that I bought specifically and it'll recommend you things that are similar to these things. But I also went through and hearted like almost 30 items that you could just shop from as well. So use the code, use the link to shop and let's get back to reading. And then the book haul I have, I bought books based on only their book covers being pretty, which was so fun because I've never even, I don't know why, but I've never even considered buying one of these gorgeous Barnes and Noble exclusive editions of classic. They're massive, they're heavy, and I thought they would be like $40, which is probably why I never tried to buy one, but I think it was like $25, which is pretty crazy considering like a normal hardback that's not special is $25 sometimes. And this one has like a bookmark, it's got special pages, and actually tons of the comments on that video was that I should read Little Women. So the little bookmark is so cute. I just cannot imagine reading a book this big. Actually, I kind of can. This would be so fun. I feel like I'd have to make it a video challenge though to get me interested <laughs> in finishing it. And then I also bought Les Mis, which my dad actually bought me the abridged version of this book and really wants me to read it. So I actually do want to read this, but I think this is the unabridged version because it's like almost it's 900 pages long. So these are so pretty. I can't wait to figure out where to display these in my library. And then for the rest of them, I already showed you guys Tom Lake. For the audiobook of this, I have about 45 minutes left of it and it's going really well. Showed y'all these already. And then I bought The Spectacular by Fiona Davis. This was a book of the month pick at one point in time, but I never got it because it's historical fiction. And I don't know why I always assume historical fiction will be so boring, but I don't think that's true. This one seems to be more like mystery and suspense, which I think could get me really interested. And I don't know why I've always loved this cover so much. And then this is a romance book that I've never heard anyone talk about, but every time I see it at the store, I want to buy it fully just because of how the cover looks. I don't know why I find it so satisfying. I love the baby pink. Got a few comments though about people who've read this. I saw another Gabrielle Zevin book, which I just read this one on my main channel and gave it five stars. So even though I don't even really fully understand what this book is about, I'm down to read it just because it's her writing and it's called The Hole We Are In. I'm not obsessed with the cover. I do like the color. They kind of match, but so there's my book haul. They are so cute together. I'm kind of obsessed, but I'm about to go to a coffee shop to finish this book and this one because I'm starting to get really anxious to start other books like Pineapple Street. I feel like I've been reading this one for so long. I just finished Crown of Midnight. I remember this one was my favorite out of the first three books of the series that I read and it was five stars. And now I remember why, because the ending is absolutely insane. And I forget that you learn something so crazy about the series in only the second book. So now I'm kind of hyped up again to continue the series. Cause for a second there I was like, I'm gonna get stuck in the series again. I'm not gonna finish it. But now I'm actually motivated to Continue reading it. Also, I have like 30 pages left of Tom Lake and I've only been listening to the audiobook the entire time, but I always like to read a little bit of the book whenever I do audio reads of books because then when I review the books and I only ever listen to the audio, I get confused on how I would have enjoyed it had I physically read it. So I'm gonna physically try to finish it so that I can see if I would have thought this book was boring if I wasn't listening to Meryl Streep read it to me. So far, I still like the writing a lot and I'm watching football. Hey. I started Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson and within a day I got like halfway through it Which is awesome because you just don't think that literary fiction is something you'll binge But this review right on the front says a cancel all plans kind of book utterly addicting big-hearted and effective Pineapple Street let us into an outrageous world of generational wealth and privilege I'm now on page 172 and I am loving it I'm just gonna be watching football all day So I'm gonna be also reading this book But you're just following a few different characters POVs and they are all very very 
very, very wealthy living in New York City and you're just following each of their lives. All the perspectives are interesting. Are interesting? Whoa, that's hard to say. All the perspectives are interesting. The whole thing just, it really does just keep flowing. So I'm so happy that I like this book because the cover is so pretty. I was hoping that the inside would be just as enjoyable because look at that. I've never filmed in this spot. I feel kind of formal. I'm sitting at my dining room chair. Let's go keep reading. Okay, Pookies. Okay, Book Girlies Club. Let's go keep reading. the next day and I absolutely binge read the rest of Pineapple Street. I was gonna say Pineapple Express. That's a movie. Look at the cover. That's their New York City apartment on the cover. Isn't that so sick? This book was so fun. I went on Goodreads to give it a little four stars and saw so many one star reviews. And it's always so funny when that happens because you're like, oh, interesting. Like I saw a review that said this was a slow moving book that's only about characters and it is fully like character driven. It's not that much plot, but I think I love character driven books. So to me, this felt fast. It felt very fast. I haven't really been able to binge read very much lately because my brain doesn't want to. I get bored. But this one was really easy to just keep reading, which to me signifies a good book. And I love reading about people in New York City who have hundreds and millions of dollars, sometimes billions, of inherited money and how they all react to that and the little drama that goes down. So this was a win for me and I'm also very excited that I liked it because of it being literary fiction and me previously thinking that I didn't like that genre. So that's awesome. So we officially have two books in this video that I read pretty much based off the cover being pretty, but also because they are literary fiction books that I wanted to try out. They're both very popular. I feel like at the moment, I mean, Anne Patchett has won so many awards and this is also part of Reese's book club. This one's part of Good Morning America book club. I wish we could get a sticker that said, this one's part of the book girlies book club. One day we can hope, you know? So that's awesome. And then finish of midnight in this video, so I won't have time to delve into it, but I will be moving on to Air of Fire, the third book. And then I guess I'll read Assassin's Blade after that. I don't know. I have this book on Kindle as well so that I can hopefully get through it more. And then I'm so excited to move on to other books in the series because I hear the next book after this, Queen of Shadows is like everyone's favorite. And then hopefully from there, I'll just start flying through it because right now I wouldn't use the word flying necessarily. Thank you for watching another Reading Diaries video. And don't forget to click the link in the description to shop my favorite picks off of ThreadUp and use Afterpay. Use the code CHEER, 40% off. Thank you to ThreadUp and Afterpay for sponsoring this video. See you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye!